I'm one of the R&D engineers and dyno tuners here. Basically, we've got a pretty exciting build on the go. It's a 2020 Hyundai i30N. We've done a whole stack of mods to it, ranging from suspension, intercooler, blower valve, intakes, everything that you can think of, all bolt-on accessories. To tune it up, we're using live custom tuning with a UniX ECU. Now, it's come up great, continues to come up great. The build has been exciting. We've got a whole heap of data with great results. Keep you posted, but continue to watch. It's good fun. What we've got here is a 2020 Hyundai i30N. It's a two liter front wheel drive turbo. Uh, what we'll be doing, we're going to do a whole heap of R&D on it, waiting on lowering it, putting some sway bars in it, some new linkages. So the first thing we're going to do is obviously measure the standard height, fit our springs, fit our sway bars, and then obviously see where we end up as a result. Okay, so when we're looking at lowering a car, we always find a reference point on the vehicle that doesn't change. In this instance, I'll be using the lower part of the center cap, obviously because on the car itself, that will always remain constant. So simply by measuring from the bottom of that cap to the wheel arch, I can tell you that that's 390 mil. So once it's lowered, I'll be able to get a good reference of how far it's come down exactly. Okay guys, so I've measured all four corners of this i30N. The front's basically square, 378 mils from the lower side of that center cap. The rear, there is a five mil difference with the left-hand side being 390, the right-hand side being 385 mil. So to measure the changes the Resonator Delete will do on this i30M, we've downloaded a decibel app on one of our phones. It might not be completely accurate, but what it will give us is the difference between the before and after. If any, so it'll be interesting to see. So let's check it standard. So that gave us a maximum of 99.7 decibels. We did that at a meter away from the exhaust with the phone on the ground. So you can see here, max 99.7. Like I said, get it on the hoist, cut out that resonator. We'll see what comes of it. So lowering this i30N, we'll be using H&R springs, as well as Super Pro sway bars and a bush kit with new link pins as well. So moving on to lowering the front of this i30N, we have got a upgraded sway bar as well as sway bar linkages. Now these are adjustable, so not only are they a beefed up version of the standard sway bar linkages, what's important is when you lower a car, it obviously changes the sway bar angle, especially at the ball joint. So when you lower a car, you bought your standard sway bars tend to compensate for it by putting the ball joints on a silly angle. The benefit to having an adjustable sway bar is you can then compensate for that by shortening the sway bar to allow for the lowered springs. So just fitted the uh, the new front sway bar. Um, one of the downsides to it was obviously I had to drop the, the K-frame in order to get to it. Um, but the positive side to it was really easy. There was a couple of bolts holding the electronic rack on and obviously just the lower mounts for the shocks. But yeah, within 45 minutes it was on the ground. So pretty straightforward exercise. So I've got a set of vernies here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the difference in diameter between the factory sway bars and the aftermarket Super Pro sway bars. So what you can see on the bench here is that we've taken the front struts, shocks, everything like that off as one entire assembly with the brakes still in place. It's easy to do this way, they're not very heavy. It gives us a quick, easy way and access to replace the front springs. So we're going to be removing the standard dump pipe so that I can get into a jig and start fabricating an aftermarket high flow dump pipe. It uses a, uh, a high flow cap. Um, to get to this point, I've had to drop the K-frame, um, left the steering rack in place. Um, it was all pretty straightforward. So yeah, it'd be good to get this one off and see what it's like. Next thing we're gonna be doing on this i30N is upgrading the blower valve. The standard blower valve is a plastic um, module, which I'll remove now quickly. All right, so that is the standard blow-off valve. It's very common to see it on, uh, on all modern and new cars. We're gonna be upgrading that to a turbo smart dual port valve. Um, comes with the adapter to fit the, uh, the air intake and everything like that. So not only a little bit better uh, boost vent, better sound as well. Okay, so 
changed over the plumb back hose. Like I said, it's got an adapter plate. Be fitting it back to the intake now. So head over to the car. Blow off valve on these is very easy to get to. Just a matter of removing the air box. Blow off valve is on the cold pipe. Simply fit the adapter in the new blow off valve, you'll be ready to go. So we fitted the suspension a few days ago. We've done a few hundred Ks and given it a chance to settle down. It's been on the dyno and everything since. So I thought we'd take some after measurements to see exactly how far it's dropped down and see if it has leveled out a little bit. So we'll start at the left hand front. Still using the bottom of the center cap as our reference. We're at 355 mil. At the rear, 360 mil. So it is still five mil higher in this back corner. And shooting over to the driver's side. 355. And 355. So three of the four sides are 355 mil, five mil higher in the back left corner. I don't really have an answer as to why it's five mil higher. It could be a setup from the factory if they were released in left-hand drive or something like that. But overall, it dropped the height that we thought it would and it drives and handles great. Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, we were doing some exhaust mods on this. Um, we went as far as putting a four inch dub pipe on it with a four inch 100 cell cat, a flex join. We've used essentially the standard exhaust from there except we've deleted the center muffler resonator. Um, we're using the same phone but the same app at the back of the car. We'll see what the uh, decibel reading is now. Okay, so same test as the first time, a meter away. Like I said, same app, same phone, 104.2 decibels. So it's quite an increase, another five decibels. Um, the popping's a lot more aggressive and a lot more louder, so sounds cool. All the mods are done, suspension, blow-off valve, dump pipe, etc. Just about to prep it for the dyno and see what we get out of it. <laughs> 